Hive. Good evening, beautiful people. You are tuned into the All Streets broadcast on MNN. Art is a celebration of culture, life, revolution, and evolution. On stage, we have Brendan from Pulse and artists Leon Smith wait, 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 one second, one and second. Jordan. One, one second, one second. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. He's not here. He's not here. And he's not here. Oh. He's here, but he's actually posing as a her. Um. Okay, correction. Uh, apologies. Tonight, on stage, Jordan. They will be creating artistic projects that will debut, or she, he, Jordan, it's complicated. They will be uh, creating artistic projects that will debut at the Brick House event on June 17th, 2012. You're witnessing the birth of a masterpiece that is entitled, Sue the Government for Allowing Bad Laws to Exist. On the agenda for tonight is a report on the future viability of future occupations, and a look into the Occupy scene. But first, oh, I'm sorry. Yo, this supposed to be a video. Yeah, here. like I, uh -huh. I guess I was just talking to someone, <clears throat> and apparently they don't really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So like, what are you doing here then? there's there's nobody gonna be seeing us. Well, I guess what's gonna have to happen is Jordan is gonna have to sing a song to the Pachin Lama. So why oh, don't you um, re-announce it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, I think we should maybe do some ohms first. Ohms? Yeah. Ohms before I announce it? Or is it announce ohms, then Jordan dancing? Let's do ohms first. Uh -huh. Ohms. Okay, I think three M's is enough. All right. On the agenda for tonight is a report on the future viability of physical occupations and a look into the Occupy scene. But first... You have to announce me, dude. Oh, Jordan singing a song to the Pan Shen Lama. I think there's supposed to be music. There's no music. Who's yeah. doing music? I don't know. Did we give them the Don? music? Is, who did you give Not Jill, to? man! You didn't give them music. I'd okay. give, well, we dude, don't can you music. give them music? I can, can somebody <laughs> sing some music? Well, how about this? You get them the music, and the next time he has to call me up, right. it'll be there. Okay. And they can just like play the music. There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next episode, including Jordan singing a song to the Passion Lama. Well, I guess what I could do, though, is, is talk about the Passion Lama. Let's do that. All right, I'll talk about the Passion Lama. 17 years ago, the Passion Lama disappeared. The Pachin Lama is the successor to the Dalai Lama, and it's believed that his kidnapping was politically motivated. Supporters of the Pachin Lama gathered in Union Square on his birthday to celebrate his life and support the right of the individual to choose their own path. Some of the Pachin Lama's supporters are requesting for anyone that has information about the missing Pachin Lama to please step forward. Any emails sent to the All Streets email are not confidential and may be monitored. We are requesting that you send any items or information of a sensitive nature to our P.O. box. Actually, I've got a question. It's, um, it's actually a physical address. The, uh, they don't have the P.O. box. It, the it's address a physical is, uh, address. Occupy All Streets, 64 Fulton Street, Suite 404, New York, New York, 10038. That works. Uh, Someone will find that information. Hey, when did we not get a P.O. box? I'm sorry. Huh? Nigel, when did we not get a P.O. box? All right, so um, right now we've got uh, a video 
singing the song, but oh, no, I'm singing that. Wait, wait. For... We have an address. Oh, we have an address. We have an address. Is it 64 Fulton Street? Yes, it is. 6404? Yes. New York, New York, 10038. Awesome. Um, occupiers have been, have been getting evicted all across the nation, supposedly because they offered offend the general population with their determination to speak their mind. According to police departments we talked to, the biggest reason why occupations get dismantled is because they are extremely messy. There's one occupation that did not have that distinction. Tabitha Holly has more on the story. That didn't look like on. that didn't look like Tabitha Holy. We'll get that video to you shortly. Dude, that was the guitar army, man. That was the guitar army. I, that was today, wasn't that? It was today. That was fantastic. They they were they were incredible. Did you see the guitar army? Yeah, uh, I saw I saw them a couple what times. What did you They've see been... the guitar army do? Mostly play the guitar and sing some songs. It was. Inspirational, it pulled people in. It was fantastic. Is that right? Yeah, you're perfect. Is that her finger? The video's on. What is that? and the end of an era in Newark-occupied history. 
For all the activists who were evicted from their encampments, finding free or low-cost housing was high on their list of priorities. According to reports we've received, multiple housing options were made available to occupiers after the raid of Liberty Square. Gay Squat was one of those options. Now would be a great time to bring up that video of drumming in the gay squat. You know what? Drumming? That would be. Wow. Where's our video of drumming in Stop it, yo. Seriously, seriously. I know why they didn't play the video. Why is that? Because, man. You don't mean like conspiracy? Dude, I wasn't even thinking about that. Now that you brought it up. Who's, who's in the control room? Let me read about this Valentine's Day massacre. Mm -hmm. The Valentine's Day massacre signaled the end of Newark's physical occupation and the end of an era in Newark Occupy history. Oh, man. There we go. Absolutely. So, yo, they're, they're amazing. They're the, amazing. You guys. know those guys. You said a ponytail guy with uh, single. He's, he's single. He's, he's looking for ladies. That's fantastic. Oh. I like it when they occupy the subways. They do one of the better jobs. Absolutely. It's entertaining. And when was this that we saw there? It was like two days ago. Like two days ago. Yeah. All right. And who are these guys? Wow. Well, one of those names is B. I don't know their group name, though. They said it in the video. But these guys are occupiers. Yeah. Fantastic. I don't think I read that. You don't read what? I don't think I read that. Gay Swat, Squat was legend in Brooklyn. Some nights, it was home to 40 or more occupiers. Revolutionaries from across the United States came to New York and hoped to get an invitation to the only squat with heat, running water, and electricity. One of the highlights of the Gay Squat chapter in Occupy history was the wedding of Anthony and Amanda. I think we've got a clip of that. That was great, that was great. There is a we don't have a clip to this? Yes. You did a clip? Wedding clip? Wedding? Anybody wedding clip? Is oh, it, it might be on YouTube. 
Oh yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna... All right, guys. Tone, you, us. Our friendship became the foundation of a priceless love. Our love came from more than just conversation and laughter. It's from my all. all I said. You help to care for my love, and I help you find yours. We have pride and share stories on life and the reality of ours, the love we have and where it takes us, and how it will continue to help us grow. My thoughts of you were more than just a dream, more than a simple touch or wink of an eye. My thoughts became yours too. We walked side by side before we ran into this love and commitment. We sang to each other, danced, shared secrets, argued, cooked for each other, and you listened. You listened to me in my most deepest, darkest moments. You listened. And as we talked and laughed and kissed, you felt my passion. Our friendship became more than just a simple good and plenty cracker jack box or a sticker at the last caramel brunch. Our friendship became us, you and me, and we began to love all the way. I love you all the way, from the sunrise glare on your face to the shadows of the sun setting on our bodies as you lay your head on my chest. I love you all the way, from your Wednesday crazy home days to your Sunday morning Eskimo kisses. I love you all the way from the I'm running late, baby, so go ahead and order us dinner. I'll be there just in time for our first white kind of love. You inspire me. You believe in me. And above all, you have always loved me and have given me time to grow. Time to grow into this love with you because you now. Oh, oh, okay. Well then, one of the highlights of Gay Squat Chapter in Occupy History was the wedding of Anthony and Amanda. Let's play that. We have that. Shh. It'll come up eventually. Let's play the video Yo, dude. of the wedding of Anthony and Amanda. Almost. Almost. We've almost got that video. Oh, uh, maybe right. if you've got a moment before you play the wait, video. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I have, a, I have, I have a moment. I need, I need to say something. I would like to say that the Pagasa tribe has offered to host the Occupied Music Festival on August 16th. To the video. Now it's just you girls. Y'all gonna be talking about that right now. <laughs> Is this really a wedding? Watch the wedding. Yeah, it's it's an, it's really a wedding. It's the most hilarious wedding you've ever seen in your life. Wait till they get started. <laughs> We now commit each other to love, honor, and respect each other 
to communicate with each other, to look to your own emotional well and health so that you can relate in a healthy way to provide a healthy home for children if you choose to have them, to a support and comfort for your partner in times of sickness and health as long as love shall last. I did. Oh, sure. Well, you're ready. Fabulous. With the glasses? Yes. Okay. Can you read? Oh, I guess so. Um, I'd like to... Ah, there we go. I'd like to address the public right now because there's a, an issue that's come to my attention. I'm the, my name's Najil. I'm the emissary for Occupy All Streets. My job is to speak to the NYPD and their uh, appointed representative for the purpose of Occupy. I've been uh, given the name of a... Detective Rick Lee from the 7th Precinct. His phone number is 212-334-0640. That's Detective Rick Lee, phone number 212-334-0640. His email address is F-I-R-S-T-P-C-T-C-A. That's First Precinct. Community Affairs, F-I-R-S-T-P-C-T-C-A, at AOL.com. This gentleman introduced himself to me approximately three weeks ago and said that he had been desperately struggling, desperately struggling, to find someone within the Occupy Wall Street movement with which to talk to about things that were related to the NYPD. After telling me this, he put off our meeting for approximately a week. I waited. I called him after a week, and I said, sir. Uh, Detective Lee, can we possibly meet? And he said, you know, if I had someone like you to talk to over the last six months, hundreds of arrests could have been avoided. And I said, excellent, then we should get together. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm busy because of the Tribeca Film Festival. And I said, you know, you guys are arresting about four or five people a, a day. Well, next week is good. So 35 arrests later is, is good. Is that what you're saying? Well, you know, um, the Tribeca Film Festival's got me really busy. So I waited, and I uh, tried to get to him again. And unfortunately, he said that he was still too busy. So if anyone is watching this anywhere at all, please take that email address down. Please take that phone number down and just flood his email box until he can't possibly do anything but answer people wondering why he doesn't have the time to meet with a 50,000 strong community and discuss with them why they're getting arrested every day. I don't know, that's, that, that's, it. that's what I have to say about that. We're good on that? Yeah, we're good. I, I feel better. Feel better? Mm -hmm. Detective Rick Lee! <laughs> okay, okay. Good day, everyone, and thank you for listening to All Streets News Network. Today is May 1st. Happy Dalton e. Occupy Atlanta held a mass strategy meeting for United Offense Wednesday, April 25th. What is up with you? The I'm meeting wearing was a hoodie for Trayvon. That's right, Trayvon. They took my hoodie. I had to, I had to wear it. Tell us about Trayvon. Trayvon was a young African American who was killed in Donna, Florida by our famous now Mr. Zimmerman who is walking out on bond and we are waiting for justice for Trayvon's case. Give me my... I'd also like to talk about Phil Pinnell who was a teenager similar to Trayvon, 18 years old. In 1990 he was shot in the back in a city called Teaneck, New Jersey the police officer there said that he had a weapon, but autopsy showed that he was running away from the officer with his hands like this. So mm. I'd also like to mention that, Phil Pinnell. Oh my goodness. So like, now, you were around for Philip Pinnell, right? Yes, that was my first riot. That was your first riot? Yeah, I met Al Sharpton, we worked together. We formed a peaceful march down Teaneck Road in Teaneck, New Jersey, leading up to the police, no, not the police, to a church, a black church, right? Nice, calm, peaceful Jewish town. So we're walking up to the church, and they have the police with the riot shields and the, the sticks. At the funeral? 
at the funeral on the way to the church, up that the stairs to the church. That is disrespectful. Yeah, so, you know, that didn't last long. And four overturned police cars later, I had to run home and tell my mom, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't in that riot. So, yeah. That was 20 years ago. Wow. So, I mean, that seems to have been a, a very, a very uh, lifted type of uh, confrontation that you had with the police back in that, that, that day and time. Well, you know. Do you see that kind of drama happening now? Do you see people being a little bit more passive about it? Do you mind if I change into my, into my Go hoodie? Go ahead. Yeah, you, you should change into your hoodie. I like my hoodie. Same, Same thing continues on. Same thing happens Why now. Why did you change out of your hoodie? Oh, I must apologize to the public. This is an experiment. We are experiment. occupying we your are TV. We are occupying your TV. We're showing you the dirty things that go on behind the scenes. Can I just interject at this juncture here? Sure. Hey, Would you like to help me go through these rules? Sure. Uh, and first, I just want to speak about a friend of mine. Um, my name is Don. I'm from Occupy New Haven. Awesome. And uh, we've been helping a friend of ours, um, J.O. Richardson, spelled uh, J-E-W-U. But three years ago, he was shot by the New Haven police for absolutely nothing. Shot eight times, I believe. Um, he was in the hospital for a month or so, got all patched up. He gets out. He's a free man. Um, a couple weeks later, he gets himself an attorney, and he decides to sue the city of New Haven, and all of a sudden, he's got attempted murder charges on him. Um, his criminal trial is coming up real short here, and his lawyers all of a sudden decided they need their money now, and, or else they're backing out before his trial. And if that happens, he's not going to get an adequate defense, and he's definitely going to prison on trumped up charges because the city does not want to be sued. Um, if anybody would like to help out this legal defense fund, he has like $3,700 left to pay by next Friday, by this Friday, excuse me, or his lawyer's going to back out of the case. It's, um, the pe uh, People Against Police Brutality, yep. uh, or J uh, Jail Richardson, Care of People Against Police Brutality at 37, that's 37, Howe Street, H-O-W-E Street, New Haven, Connecticut, 06511. Anything would help. We need to keep one of our friends out of jail. We need to keep a brother out of jail who's unjustly shot and charged. I'm talking about Jay Wu, right? Jay yeah. He is um, also known as Jay Wu, and if anyone wants to make any donations or so stop by and show us some support, we will be at Free to Spit, which is a open mic poetry venue that we have the first Friday of every month. That's at 37 House Street in New Haven, Connecticut, at the People's Center. You guys can stop by from 7 to 9, and until afterwards it gets pretty hot, but we will be um, collecting donations for his legal defense. And your support is vital. Very vital. Back to you, Jordan. <laughs> Back to Miss Sparrow. Um, I'm just going to read this. Okay. You going to stay with me? Nice. We accept that many have not reached a level of consciousness to understand what psychological fascism is and have subscribed to institutional systems that validate their existence. So I would like to share with you some tips for successfully demonstrating. One, be cautious. Any activities that can evoke a party atmosphere should be avoided. Anything can happen. It's important to keep a clear head. Two, listen. Be mindful of your environment. If your senses detect an odorous substance, it's probably a good idea to move to a safer environment. During a protest, exposure to any kind of chemical is harmful. Number three, be chill. Try not to be antagonistic or to respond to agent. You know what word I'm trying to say, antagonistic behavior. 
Because violence, doesn't, it doesn't come from verbal communication. It comes from nonverbal communication. So if you use polite tones and you refrain from using profanity, it goes a long way in determining whether or not the interaction you had with the police is successful or not. Number four, be humble. We are perfectly within our rights as citizens to defend our fundamental freedoms and privileges that are being denied. They're being denied to us by force. So it's important to be chill and not self-righteous about it because people are entitled to their own opinions. So get along with other occupiers. When we're done with the police, be chill. That's all it is. And those are those are the tips for successfully demonstrating. Good luck to guys. It's May Day. Right now we found a nice clip of some performance art. Go ahead and play that. Coming up really soon, we've got some uh, live feed from Timcast down there at uh, the south end of the island. Coming up right now, Sparrow's going to come over and show me some dance moves. I'm going to see if I can learn to free my body as free as my mind. And we're working on getting some music so that we can... It's OK, man. Looks like we're at the Vietnam War Memorial. Looks like the NYPD is barricaded off the street, stopping the protesters that are crossed from, cross from coming over.
hour 13. Man, my legs hurt. What tree? No, that was a long time ago, man. Is it still up in there? Probably. I don't know. It's in Albany. There was one. There was another one. I caught the tree. When? Maybe an hour ago. All right, I'm gonna come up here, try and see what's going on. Excuse me. More and more people keep showing up, but. The group that's across the street was blocked off. It looks like most of them have left or have gone a different way. I don't know if this may be a good call or not. I think they're going to wait until it dies down. It's too, it's, too, it's too big right now. I don't think they're going to do anything now. They're going to wait until it dies down. Two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Without a doubt. That's what they always do. That's what they yep. did at the raid. That's what they did at the well, six-month anniversary. So that's all they can do. That's all they can do is wait till. it's... This is their new occupation. It is? This is this, I gotta say, I, I, everybody tell me, and I got a text message saying this is where the new occupation of Wall Street will be. This is where people will try to stay here tonight. Some text like people know. Yes. So, people are telling me this is this, this, this is this is over the occupation right here. This is the reoccupation. This is like the fifth reoccupation since the uh, eviction. But what Luke is saying is he's hearing from multiple sources that they are attempting to reoccupy, and this is the new location. There's been more and more of them coming in here. that are watching right now, several general assemblies taking place, hearing from Luke that this is the site of a new occupation. It's 
looks like this uh, NYPD right here is taking a picture of the rules. People ask me, like, you only had uh, 3,000 simultaneous viewers today. And then someone else was like, they're all here. So again, thank you everybody who's, who's uh, tuned in. I'm just walking around this big, uh, the Vietnam War Memorial right now where there's, looks like a couple thousand, if not several thousand, having a general assembly. On the other side, there's still a few more thousand. Huge group here, possibly upward of 10,000. I'm told that this is the site of the new occupation. Looks like we can see some NYPD starting to stage from the back. I walked up these steps like two minutes ago and the cops weren't there because they're blocking people from in. Yeah. Now you, can't, now you can't come in this way either? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't seen anyone not. I haven't seen anyone get turned away yet, but I'm expecting that's what they're trying to do. And the photo I got, it was yeah. great. Yeah, it was great. And then Luke did the same thing. But uh, it looks like the police are starting to stage from, you know, surrounding the entire place. Yeah, they didn't even get out of our own building. They weren't even letting residents in. That's crazy. I'm going to keep going yeah. on. Nice to meet you guys. Take care. Some NYCLU workers handing out Know Your Rights pamphlets. And we're back. And I'm actually really excited about uh, Veterans Park right now. Uh, that's amazing. You guys, you guys are Park, doing I, good. I, I Keep think, it up. I think I hear that's on Water Street. Veterans Park might be a really awesome place to hang out right now. Um, so this is uh, Jordan. And, and Jordan's going to show us actually how to make some outfits. We're going to get something dancey, and then we're going to use that. She's gonna show me how to how to move. How to oh, I keep forgetting about this furniture. It's so dangerous, really. You know what? Marble tables. Marble tables. Okay, so this is what I've got. I've got this really cool piece of fabric. It's about. I would say. Can we turn off the music? Wait, no. I, I'm having fun. That's good, thank you. Down. You don't have to turn it all the way off, just a little just a little bit. Because I want to dance and not actually do what I'm supposed to do. Um, 
This is about two yards long. You can get this fabric almost at any store in Brooklyn for $2 a yard. It's a bright color, it's beautiful. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of fabric and make a square. I'm gonna lay it on the carpet. I'm gonna take my scissors and insert them in the fold that I've created and just swipe all up and down the fabric with my scissors. Now ideally, you don't use barber scissors when you cut fabric, you use fabric scissors, it just works out easier that way. So now, what I have here is a square. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before across only the center part of the skirt. So I'm gonna take a little nip, like a little nip right here. And then I'm gonna tear along the fold. But not a lot, just a little bit. Nervous. All right. There you go. <laughs> so, this type of fabric is stretchy. You can stretch the ends and it'll give you like an, a, a finished appearance if you like. So now, I have a skirt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the skirt over my head. Oh wait, I can't do that because I want sunglasses so I actually have to slide it the other way. You can tear a little bit, get it on you. That looks great. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, let's, let's use these and let's get some dance dance moves. Show us uh, All right. how to to do some moves in that. Take a leg if you All will. Right. So what you're gonna do? Stand in the stance right here. Exactly. That works too. You're gonna put your foot out right there, and then you're gonna step like that, mm -hmm. right? And then you're gonna do like this with your heel. Mm -hmm. Put your hands on your hips. The ladies like it, it's sexy that way. That's your movement. And then you can start to speed it up. One, two. Fantastic. Right. Now another one I think is really fun. It's my favorite. I love to do this. And this is the modified hip circle. I do the modified hip circle because I don't want to offend anybody. I hear if you do a pelvic thrust in Egypt, it's against the law. <laughs> so, All you right. take your hip, you go in a circle, circle. Then you stop here, and then you go to the side. Oh, that way you're not. Right. Go to the side. Yeah, get that little sway in. Okay. So you're gonna go around and to the side. All right, and let's do one more move. Let's do like an arm move. What do you think? An arm move, yes. An arm move. Oh, Get my arms wow. out. You ready? Yeah. Look at those arms. Arm move. All right. So you can have your pick. Do you want to make gentle waves, rolling waves, or waves like this? All right. Let's do these waves. Let's do gentle waves. Let's I think do gentle, some gentle waves. Yeah, let's do some gentle waves. All right, so when you do your gentle waves. I'm sorry. Attention, please. I want to learn. Attention, man. Yes. So you can get arms like me. When you do your gentle waves, the muscle, your muscles actually in your, in your shoulders and your, this that part of your arm, they're doing a lot of work. So you're going to do shoulder. What? Two minutes. Two minutes? Sweet. Shoulder, 
Elbow and wrist. Yeah, like that. Shoulder, elbow, and wrist. This is, this is the squid. Yeah, it's, it's like that, but just control your movements. All right, so we got like two minutes left. So let's play some music and practice like the three moves we learned. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be good. You know those little dancing, blowing things? The, the things like on the corner saying like, get your oil at this place. <laughs> I don't okay, know I just learned that, that today. Really? Thank you. You're so silly. All right, let's do this. You ready? You lead. No music. There's no music. No. Let's do this dry. You ready? OK. So what we're gonna do is this. Ready? You're gonna snap. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna move to my snaps. Ready? Ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was great. That was fantastic. Well, maybe we can leave this now uh, with a little bit more uh, live streaming from Timcast. I think that'll be great. I think that'll be fantastic. Thank you very much for watching. Occupied Theater. Thirteen hours and twenty-two minutes. Nine hours. You got four hours on me. Still gonna figure out how to beat you on that. But I'm probably I probably won't. You're probably gonna be out here as long as I Yep. I can't stop streaming right now. You can't interrupt history. Your hands stuck. What? It's so sore. No, my leg. I would say in a couple hours. Kevin asked me if I could interview you. So I'm, I'm hearing from Ryan Devro. He quoted, "Some of us will stay here indefinitely," says one speaker. We will stay here indefinitely. People are saying that over there. Yeah, that's why I said this is going to be the new occupation. Without a doubt. So I'm seeing from John Nepal, he says that Occupy Wall Street is allowed to stay in the park till 10 a.m. And uh, 10 a.m. Why 10 a.m.? No idea. I got some questions for you. 10 p.m. Oh, 10 p.m. So it's already 9:24. Yep. Can I ask you some questions? Yeah, sure. Did social media drive story, or did it did it work? Wait, what? What? Are you getting any respect from the police? No. Hips, hipster cop waves to me and smiles like a dork. He goes like this. I mean, he goes, ah, from like far away, it's funny. Yeah, I see him today. Um, His name's Rick, I learned from the NLG. Are you, are the news organizations asking you for content? Uh, I got asked earlier, but then they emailed me back and said that they had to cover Obama's speech and they were pushing May Day off the, off the schedule. Do you feel you are keeping this narrative going? Where are you getting these questions from? Kevin. Oh, oh, come on. Seriously? Kevin Breslin. Email you questions. Asked. He's asking, yeah. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Do I feel like I'm keeping the narrative going? Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what that means. Well, a do lot you of people... feel social media is driving the story? I'll say this for everybody right now. We saw a video uh, from Reuters that said, Occupy Wall Street Resurgence, a dud. And uh, so, for whatever reason, I mean, you guys at Reuters who are probably watching this, 
You had a video out for over an hour. I don't know if it's still up. You can check. And uh, and clearly, there's several thousand people down here at at uh, the Vietnam War Memorial. Tens of thousands of people marched. So that was. Uh, Does really, really, the good information was coming from social media. Does direct action in social media give streamers a story to report? You're not even asking the questions well, dude. Well, that's what the, I'm just reading them up right now. <laughs> Why? Uh, this is this is what he told me to ask. Why the glasses? Pepper spray? Question mark. Have the cops or have they gained any respect for streamers? I th- I don't think mo- I don't think the police know what what a streamer is. Yeah, I find that interesting because a lot of cops are like, what are you doing? Like, what is that? Like, they're like, are you live? Like, what, what, yeah, they'll ask me what I'm doing. They'll be like, oh, you're filming this? I'll be like, well, I'm live. And they go, really? How are you? Yeah, they don't yeah really the, uh, the Reuters know. video is still up. Uh, I mean, three three hours ago. And it's being, uh, it, looks like, it looks like it's being picked up by tons of other smaller outlets. still here and it looks like well, they have the occupation. I think what they're trying to have me ask you is how do you feel social media drives this movement? I don't know about social media driving the movement, but I know that without social media all the all the info coming out would be mostly BS. And by We've got Reuters.com, Occupy Wall Street Resurgence at Dud. Yeah, that's interesting. What time did they release that video? Three hours ago. Well, Google says three hours, so it could be it could be a little bit more. But uh, I know that there's probably some guys from Reuters watching this right now. I mean, you guys have had three hours to get that video down, but you've kept it up, and it's been it's it's been picked up by multiple other smaller blogs. That's just reckless. That's irresponsible. That's uh, that's lazy. That's called mainstream media. That's called mainstream media. So for those that are watching this uh, the stream right now, uh, I gotta say, for those who work for these big mainstream companies who try, and they and they they're good people, then uh, then I, then uh, you you have my respect. But you know, for whatever reason, that stuff like this continues to happen. These, these are these are issues you guys gotta correct. And. Uh, and I think I think you can respect me when I say or when I come down on on mainstream media for, for for having things like this happen. You know, this is why you have events like Occupy Wall Street. This is why alternative media is is becoming so you know so uh, it's growing. So you know, you've got Luke right here streaming. It's a monster. When you've got one you know a huge uh, news organization. Even, uh, even you know, contradict their live blog, but keep the video up and then allow it to be, you know, syndicated, or not that they allowed it to be syndicated, but that by leaving it up, many more groups started uh, taking that video and, and, and reposting it, along with the article. At, at what point do you uh, do you just pull the video, just pull it down, just just pull the video down? If you report something wrong, you usually do a clarification. New York yeah. Post even does it, and there's a, uh, and there's not even any any hurt in the pride of saying, at the time this is what we thought. It seems as though uh, we didn't have as much information as we needed, and we were wrong. In fact, the the, the honor and the pride is in admitting that you were wrong, and uh, and letting everyone know, and being a man about it. Yeah, be a, <laughs> throw some balls. Being a good person. So it looks like we got. NYPD Community Affairs on the other side. Community Affairs. 